They've Four, got no space! Slasher. And she's slasher denying it all. But the style spike is starting to be diffused. Can they get it? Can they get it? Diffuse up. Oh my god! Boom! They go to Istanbul! Boom, they join the titans of Sertia. They join the titans of Paper X in a monumental series in the Indonesian derby. They come out on top three to one. So today we are going to take a look at Onik versus Boom because Boom managed to make it to champs. They are the first team to win an LCQ. And uh, so I thought we'd take a look at them and see how they managed to do it. And we'll take a look at uh, actually the first map of the series, which was Bind. Boom would go on to win 3-1. But let's start off here with round number three. Uh, this is Boom on the attack and Onik on the defense. And, uh, you know, I think APAC can have a bit of a reputation. Obviously, Paper Rex are kind of the most famous APAC team with obviously their crazy style. Uh, but not every team plays like that and uh, boom you know it's not like they always do this but this round you're gonna see this looks like an EMEA round uh, with the way that they kind of approach this and so I thought I would show it to you it's kind of just like an interesting thing so we start off on the attacking side and you see that we have a, a pretty strict default here, right? Uh, they're actually playing Fnatic's comp as well and it's clear they took some of their ideas. Uh, they had Astro Stars on both sides of the map as well to kind of, you know, again, fake that presence that they could be going uh, in either direction. And you see they're just holding for a push. This is the bonus round for Onyx. So obviously with worse guns, Onyx might be wanting to get a bit aggressive and try something. Uh, but what you're going to see eventually is that uh, that is the case as this chamber uh, pushes down uh, towards short here and he fires a bullet uh, towards this Astra and so what happens is the Viper comes across to rotate to maybe either you know help protect this Astra uh, but also to do some of the uh, Fnatic lineups now crucially what's going to happen as well is we're going to get a Fade Haunt uh, in here uh, from the Fade as you see there and the Viper is going to do these lineups uh, towards this Silver Flash comes out uh, just to check no one's uh, pushing this uh, but then in come the Viper lineups to do the Sky Dog down towards here as well very Fnatic-esque and uh, they start to get the showers control right after the Fade Haunt of Prowler doesn't see anything uh, they start to come in and so uh, they're going to use that after you know pushing this silver off this angle as well with the with the viper molly and the dog uh what they're hoping is that and it does start to happen but onika are going to stay eventually but they're hoping that that's going to drag a rotate and then with the shower control that they've got you know they feel like okay now we can push into a a, a really uh, decent idea overall and i think so far boom have done really well with 30 seconds left now they're ready to make this push the astra does end up staying here as you as you see uh but uh, they're gonna have a really really nice idea for this first kill as you will see here they start to come in they get ready look at the utility that's used here we get the astro stock the uh the prowler the nate the flash it all comes back here towards the back of sight and they get an absolutely free kill there uh, on nc slasher really really nice to start off with and then because they had got this you know super early shower control uh you know blaze king has managed after they get this deep kill on site as well he's managed to push really really deep much quicker than you could see this viper was expecting and so they get another kill off that now there is a very fast flank coming in uh from the side of uh, onik as you see here Onye is already uh, ready there and uh, and ready to to kind of you know, almost get a kill on the spike plant with a nice nade. Uh, but uh, eventually he will win that fight, but he will uh, eventually uh, fall here uh, to the raise. Uh, they do make you know it's not it's not super clean all the way through here as we get a bit of a weird fight with a judge there from the from the chamber. We get a trade on the silver there and eventually this guy will uh, beat the chamber here in that fight and they manage to win the round. But what I was kind of you know surprised by early on when I was watching this game uh, was you know this looked very much like an EMEA round right it was kind of slow default you know looking for different openings trying to manipulate the map i thought overall it was a really good round by boom now let's come to round number 11 and we're going to see a really really cool idea and honestly i think an idea that's uh, very much worth stealing if you are going to play a fade on this map as you will see uh what we're going to start off with again is kind of an early default look but we're going to get a bit of a push here from onic down towards shower the sky flashes sees them gets hit by the dart uh, so it doesn't early dog to see you know is the pressure really there they see the two people are towards uh towards this long area and it's also the chamber ult so you know they decide to come away from it they initially looked like they did want to start to go towards b but then uh, they come back to after seeing that the chamber ult is there and they know this over there as well but this is the idea that i think uh, teams might want to steal and uh, this is really i think one of the better fade ults i think i can remember seeing because they're just gonna fade ult shower right after you know kind of thinking about going towards b but then deciding to come back towards a just fade ult shower but it's just the fade there, right? But why is this so effective? Well, it's so effective because, you know, these two players are going to get caught by it, but they don't know that it's just a fade, right? This could be, this could be three people. And on, off a of fade ult, they're probably expecting... 
that, yeah, it is probably going to be more. And I think if you could even, you know, with an Astra maybe as well, you know, with this idea, maybe you even fake more stuff, like, you know, you stun as well, or, you know, you just put some Astra stars down there to make them think like, oh, this is where they cut, you know, this is the primary mode of the attack because they can't hear you, right? As soon as they get hit by the Fatal, they can't hear you anyway. So they won't know for a quite a while whether this is three people or it's just the Fate, which I think is really, really cool because then if you Fatal this and their reaction is, oh no, we're in trouble, we need to run away, and you've got four people running down here, you know, they're just going to run straight into them, which, it, it's just such a cool idea, and you see it works pretty well here overall, as we are going to get this fatal, and you see this raise is kind of too committed to actually fall back, so the raise kind of has to stay, and will stay, but you see the viper is just like panic running back, and you see we get into this position here, where, I mean, look at this, right, the viper's just running back, like, can't hear anything, gets flashed, fortunately somehow manages to escape from this situation this viper uh somehow but th this is what i mean right what a genius idea to just have the fade there this viper is going sprinting back into four people really really cool idea now Whilst that's going on, they start to come in onto the site. Uh, it actually works out pretty well for Onyx because they managed to just get this smoke down in time. Uh, but uh, eventually, you know, the Fade finds Monier pushed up with the with the Prowler uh, off the ult and gets a pretty free kill there. They get the Viper's Pit down, they get in onto site. I thought this, and they eventually kill the Viper as well. Really, really cool idea, that Fade ult. I think that that is one of the better Fade ults I've seen because sometimes the Fade ult, you know, can be a bit kind of, you know, up and down in terms of its value, right? We've, we've seen some that net, you know, not that much value overall. Sometimes it can be very useful, but uh, other times I think it can be, uh, you know, a bit slow and, you know, not as well prepared at taking that map control. But I thought this was a really, really cool idea by Boom and one that honestly, if you're going to play Fade on this map, I would be stealing this ult pretty much, you know, for, for the most part, and obviously with the Viper's Pit up, it ends up just being a, a save from Onik here, as you can see, you know, the, I mean, 5v2 with the Viper's ult, you're not going to really uh, try this, and they save the guns for the last round. And now let's come to round number 12, which is going to be a cool idea from Boom. It's actually not going to work, and I'm sure that uh, this is how, again, just little tiny things can really make a difference, because I think if this Astra is here instead of here, uh, they probably win this round. Uh, but because the Astra isn't there, uh, they aren't going to win the round and you'll see what I mean because what's going to happen is they're going to have a really uh, little cool idea They're going to uh, astral to cross like this. They're going to sky dog. They're going to prowler They're going to put up the viper wall. They're going to show a lot of pressure towards short uh, But it's actually all just a fake you see that the spike is here They're going to try and drag over these rotates over here and then just silently, you know Kind of walk in to be that's the idea and it doesn't start off too bad as you will see as they send in the prowler They send in the dog they send in the astral, you know, they send in the stars as well, right? It all looks like they're ready to go the viper actually goes running up and i quite like this idea as well right the viper just goes absolutely running up all the way the problem that they have is whilst this sova is on his way to rotate uh, the chamber has decided to, instead of rotating this way he's gonna push down this way instead and this is why having this astra here i think would have won them the round because they probably get a free kill but it, what ends up happening instead is we get a free kill and a ton of information that this is a fake the other way uh, as you see the chamber Actually, he sees two people there, so obviously he sees that, yeah, this was a fake all along. That fade turns at just, like, the wrong time, and so they get a kill. Uh, but now, obviously, they do have this Viper pushed up very deep, but I, the Astra is very, very aware here that this could be the case. Look at this from this Astra. Seems to know that this exactly, uh, this exact thing is probably going to happen, and finds the kill, actually, there on the Viper, catching them unawares, and we end up in a 5v3. So... You know, it, it's just like small little things, right, can really make the difference. And we see some nice uh, utility uses out of Onik as well. But I thought this was a really cool idea. And, you know, it, it did kind of work. You know, they did get the rotates that they wanted. They managed to get the Viper really deep onto site as well. So it started off pretty well. But just that one little thing can make it go wrong. And uh, as I said, you know, if that Astra is just in a slightly different position to start, uh, you know, they, they probably do end up finding a free kill on that chamber. And then, you know, from there, they have a 5v4 with very deep control. They probably win the round. But now let's come to round number 15, which is Boom on the defensive side now, and it's their bonus round. As you can see, they don't have great guns in this round, uh, so they're going to try and get a little bit aggressive off the start, but they are going to do something that's really, really cool, and uh, you don't see too often. So start off pretty normal, right? Early Sky Flash comes down for long, like always, uh, but uh, they do this Viper's Smoke, right? And you can see that it's pinged out by Onikia straight away, right? Because they expect they're on a bonus, they don't have great guns. 
they might get aggressive with this, right? And that is exactly what happens, because this fade is going to throw a haunt uh, up towards here, whilst these two are just kind of sitting in this smoke. So uh, up comes a fade haunt uh, just there. It does actually manage to uh, ping this uh, raise as well, so, you know, they start firing, but actually they lose the first kill. Obviously, they still don't have great guns, but they did manage to do some damage. Now, this fade is about to catch, like, an amazing timing on uh, on uh, Severine there, uh, on the chamber, coming towards shower, and so they managed to get a kill and a gun as well, but this is what's really cool, right? Because down Comanic, they tried to run down here, right? And cause a lot of noise, hoping that, again, these players maybe had rotated. But actually, these players are here instead, right? So they're here instead, uh, which is obviously not great because they're about to take the TP. But that's actually not the coolest thing that happens in this round. Uh, because what's going to happen is the Prowler kind of chases them, but then... Just that right there was a fade seize. And so what happens is, as we see on the other side, is they start getting caught by this fade seize. I think the Astra is the only one that isn't. So then they start taking the TP. The rays and the fade are going to follow them, right? Off the prowler. They're going to come in. And these guys can't hear anything, right? So... You know, they don't really know what's going on. The faces gets them, and they end up mopping up and winning the bonus round. Really, really cool round. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone get seized after, after the TP, but a really cool idea from Boom overall, and that uh, they managed to win their bonus. And now let's come to round 22, which is an interesting round uh, because we're going to get a trade of like early aggression on different sides of the map, as you can see. Uh, Boom are going to uh, take uh, this early uh, long control here, and it looks like they want to get aggressive, uh, whereas Onik are going to take early shower control on different sides of the map. Uh, so we see Skyflash, uh, Fade Haunt comes out, right, and... and Boom, start to push down towards Long. And now the Shamer, where he's put this trap, creates a bit of a problem here for uh, Onik as they've taken showers. But the problem is this Chamber, you know, who's on this side of the map all on its own, there is a little gap here, as you can see from the Chamber Trap, that they could have technically done this, right? And so that creates a bit of a question mark when he's coming around here to check they haven't pushed this way and just to get to a safe space as well. You know, he doesn't know that they haven't, just found a timing, you know, and haven't just snuck past that. Uh, so what's actually going to happen here is we're going to get the Sova coming back and droning back here. Kind of weird, right? Just to check that, yeah, they haven't actually just beaten the timing there. And uh, it doesn't see anyone, so they just kind of assume, well, well, probably hasn't happened. And there's about a minute left in the round at this point, and uh, they send a Boombot do boom towards uh, Shower, and uh, they destroy the Boombot do on it with two people there. And so I love this decision by Boom as they uh, sky dog down towards Long. They're going to push this as a trio with the Prowler here, uh, then try and take shower control. And I love this for so many reasons. One is that with about a minute left, is normally when the, the plan after a default for an attacking team, you know, tends to come in, right? About this time, they'll start talking about, okay, what do we want to do? We've got this control, you know, let's do this. Uh, but uh, at this exact time is the time when they decide, well, no, let's let's mess up their plan, right? I'm sure that Onik probably would have thought, well, we have shower control, let's do this with the control we've got, you know, probably using that shower control either as a late lurk or as, you know, the, the kind of focus point of where their attack was going to be. But uh, Boom decide, no, you're not going to do that because we're going to retake this right now at this exact time. And so they come in with the Prowler and they manage to find that kill. Really, really nice from Boom. And then they continue pushing as well, push back the Rays as well as they see retreating that from the Nade. And uh, so that gives them a lot of control. And as I said, this is normally when the plans start to formulate for teams as well. So after doing that as well, they decide to send the Viper on the rotate, feeling like, okay, we've pushed showers, so they're probably going to, you know, rotate quickly towards B, and that's where they're going to end up. Uh, and actually, they leave showers. You might think that that is a bit of a weird decision, but I actually really like that as a decision. You see the Fade and the Rays get into positions where they can't be seen if they did come to showers, but with only 30 seconds left in the round now, they've seen this Rays uh, retreating on their own uh, back here. Uh, and the thing is, you know, they have to re-clear this now, right? Which is going to take time. And uh, if they're going to do it with just contact walking in, you know, obviously that's incredibly risky for one, uh, but it's also going to probably take, you know, multiple people. Uh, and, you know, they've expended a lot of their util now to try and re-clear this as well with such little time left. So, you know, they're probably not going to go that way. So I think this is a really good setup as well here from Onik and they, and they, you know, they had a good setup. Thing is though, actually Onik are going to come back towards A, even though it seems like the less likely choice. And uh, they're going to all four walk down here, as you can See, and we're going to add a pop of both Razels. I don't know what's going on with Razels. They don't find kills. I think the Chamber TPs away, and that's why they don't find a kill there. But I don't know how Onyx didn't find a kill. And Onyx eventually end up with a 3v3 from this scenario. They're going to get the spike down and then a Viper's Pit down as well. And uh, it's going to turn into a bit of a, a weird round uh, from here. As those Razels, God knows what's happening with Razels these days. Uh, but uh, what we're going to get is, boom, uh, they kind of retake lamps here, as you see, with the with the Viper here. And they're actually going to find a kill. Looks like Monye might be able to see him here, kind of weird. 
weird. Uh, but obviously he can't because uh, he doesn't shoot and, and boom, managed to find that kill. We end up in a 2v3 and this Viper decides, okay, I'm going to take a risk. We're in a 2v3. I'm going to play outside my Viper's pit and come and, and push this. And I think there's a little miscommunication here because he drops the viper spit the reason i think he drops the viper spit is because the tap of the spike and they want this chamber to you know just not have to spam into the viper's pit right they want to just have a free kill on the guy who's defusing but i'm pretty sure there are both vipers orbs here i'm pretty sure that this is the onic orb because of the red coloring uh, i'm pretty sure that that's what it is. So they end up having to spam anyway. I mean, they do find that kill, uh, but then the Astral comes out as well. We get a trade there from Boom. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, Berserker is going to manage to uh, find the last kill as well. And Boom managed to win a, a pretty chaotic kind of weird round. And then finally, let's come to round number 23, uh, which is sometimes just goes to show that you know, sometimes timing just isn't on your side uh, for Onik here because I actually think they come up with a pretty nice plan overall. They're going to get this chamber really, really deep and he's going to cause like a, a big, big problem. We got Fade Haunt coming out here early. The Boombot comes in towards Hooker, clears that out and they get this chamber, as I say, really, really deep and he's going to start, you know, just spamming on his own, just spamming shots here. Uh, you know, he's just firing bullets in Hooker, deep in Hooker there, as you see. Uh, but the Boombot does see them and that is kind of, I think, a bit of a crucial part to that round is that this Boombot from, uh, from Boom uh, does actually manage to see someone there. So whilst this chamber has got, you know, just uh, literally just spamming bullets, just, you know, to try and, he's just jumping around, right? Trying to cause as much noise as possible to try and drag the rotate over, which it actually does, right? The fade does come across. And so they do manage to get what they want eventually here uh, on it with just that chamber going crazy. He TPs out, quite a nice idea of all, and then they're ready to go, right? So kind of a cool idea as they feel like, you know, that's that's the way to drag over the rotate. So uh, a nice idea overall. Uh, they then send in the silver roll with uh, Monye there. Unfortunately, Famous is living in the smoke that he goes into there, uh, that secondary smoke after finding the first kill. But still, they manage to get the kill. They get in onto the site and uh, we end up in this 4v4 and they're going to plant the spike here. But the spike, this, this smoke is going to drop at the worst time because it's just as if the smoke drops now, this raise is dead. I think, uh, but uh, the smoke is going to drop just as this Astra comes around the corner. And so now all of a sudden, boom, have this little nice little different elevation, like double peak going on, like just as this smoke drops, you'll see it happen here. The smoke drops there and you'll see that the Astra has just come around this corner, right? So they end up just with NC Slasher here now peeking into two people when it was just one person uh, and uh, the Astra is able to get another kill as well. Uh, God knows how you say this name, by the way, uh, but uh, I'll have to learn for champs, but... <laughs> Famous managed to get a kill as well, and uh, as I said, sometimes the timing just isn't with you. Nice nade to make sure they get the they get the round, they stick the defuse, and uh, boom, managed to uh, win this map, and then they would, as I said, go on to win uh, the game 3-1, and uh, they will be representing APAC as the third team, an Indonesian team, uh, making it to champs. I'll have to try and learn how to say some of these names, uh, but uh, very con well deserved congratulations to boom. Uh, they played pretty well, and honestly, having watched you know this map and, and the others as well, I was, I was pretty impressed with them overall. I think that, you know, uh, these teams, as we've seen in the tournaments now, you know, the gap between the different regions is very small. So if you can make it through the LCQ, you are definitely a worthy team.